Hello, everybody. Uh, Pastor David Sharon from Street Life Ministries. Just wanted to say hello. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Sorry about the radio silence. Been really busy working on Street Life Ministries recovery and uh, dealing with a lot of our uh, uptick of homelessness in the area. Well, I really wanted to uh, take this time to announce that we are going to have a live uh, YouTube Facebook feed coming October 5th. And this will uh, give us an opportunity to interview people and have live conversations with 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 our folks here and a Q and A time during the live feed. We really want to hear from you, so go on our YouTube channel, go on our Facebook, uh, like and subscribe, and hit the notification button. So, on October fifth, when the when it's time, you will get a notification that we're on, and we'd love for you to be a part of it and to interact with us and interact with our guests. So thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. and Thank you for the years of support. We love you from all of us at Street Life Ministries. God bless. Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We had to get through a couple of technical hiccups here, but we are in for a wonderful conversation here tonight. Yes, yes. Before we kick this thing off, Pastor David is going to show us a short video talking about our organization, our ministry, our mission. And so we beg your patience while you take a look at that, and then we're going to jump into the, tonight's conversation. Street Life Ministries is different than many feeding ministries. It serves a unique role in the way it cares for the homeless and the hungry in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties. Hot, home-cooked meals transported to outdoor venues are less threatening to those in need, fostering an environment for relational connections to develop between servers and friends on the streets. These connections become the groundwork for guiding friends toward healthier decisions, medical assistance, detox, housing, rehab, mentorship, and counseling, all contributing to a deep sense of meaning and purpose for those willing to invest. Each week we serve over 500 meals to men, women, and children. While not requisite to receiving Street Life Ministries services, most come early to listen to a short biblical message that frames the context for welcome and compassion. By creating an atmosphere of authentic human caring, serving times lead to transformational experiences for those served as well as those who are serving. What transpires is a surprisingly authentic community where everyone leaves satisfied, including the more than 100 volunteers and partner organizations that make it all possible. Since June of 2000, Street Life volunteers have expressed love and compassion by inviting our friends on the street to discover hope in our unique approach to the faith community we describe as no walls necessary. Our community meets on the streets for people on the streets. In the New Testament, the church was never limited by space or location. There are no walls necessary to be a healthy community of faith. Street life is made up of people from different Christian traditions who share a common, passionate desire to see the message of Jesus lived out in tangible ways. We meet together on the street, not in a building, and we believe in helping those in need with the Word of God and a hot plate of food. There is no judgment, no guilt trip, no hoops to jump through just a sincere effort to show genuine love. When the gospel is lived out in the lives of broken people, it takes a shape that is beyond a building, a specific doctrine, or a Sunday service. Street Life Ministries is a community of people striving to follow Jesus and committed to bringing the love of God to people on the streets. Yeah. Well, Welcome, everybody. We are, uh, this will be our very first uh, live podcast, and we're really grateful that everybody's able to join us. Um, I have two of my really good friends here uh, tonight, Jerome Madigan and Jeannie, and uh, we are grateful to have them here with us. Uh, I've known Jerome for several years. I've known Jeannie, I would I would almost think I don't know both of you guys about as long. I, um, I met Jeannie through higher power. And I think I met Jerome. I think I met you through higher power as well, Jerome. I think uh, when I went sort of going to higher power, which is a recovery, a Christian recovery meeting. And you guys uh, were folks that in, would celebrate the, the love of Christ with your music to us folks that are in recovery. <laughs> and um, in the same place where I met Ricky, who is also going to join us this, this evening. So 
Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to just start us off in prayer. Ricky, if you would uh, lead us in prayer, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Sure, I'd be glad to. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be joining um, everybody, our Facebook family and friends, and all those who follow and support Street Life. Uh, thank you, God, for this uh, the technology we're able to do this today and just able to meet together and reminisce a little bit about what Street Life has meant for us, how, how Street Life has impacted our lives personally, and also the work that we've seen you do, God, through the service um, of Street Life in Redwood City and San Mateo County. So we're really excited about um, the event coming up, God. We ask that you would bless it. We ask that you would bless those who come and uh, those who serve at the event. God, we just pray and ask that you be with us now in this time um, and allow us to uh, just focus on who you are and the work that you do in us and through us and the partnerships that we get to do with Street Life Ministries, serving the, the needy and the homeless in Redwood City. God, so give us time to you and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much. And so um, just kind of start off a little bit, maybe uh, uh, Jerome, Jeannie, if you guys don't mind, maybe just kind of giving a little, uh, just telling telling our folks who you guys are and maybe a little bit about why you felt led to be a part of Street Life Ministries and helping those in not only homeless, but in the recovery field. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeannie Smith. And I live in Pacifica, California, born and raised here, actually, and um, haven't left. And it's a wonderful place to live. And I've been doing worship for many years. I'm a worship leader um, at the church I go to in South San Francisco, Good News Chapel with Mark Dobrin. He's our pastor, and he's also been involved through the years with um, Higher Power and the, the ministry there. Um, so I love to do worship. That's I really believe that is the calling that God has given me and um, have been doing that at higher power with our band surrender. And day, I first met Dave um, there and his wife when they shared their testimonies and it was, you know, very powerful. And at that time, Dave was talking about forming street life ministry, or maybe it was already formed. Dave, and I'm not sure, but he had asked me several times um, to do worship and, um, so I just recently kind of came on board with um, Street Life Ministry about three years ago, and it's just been such a blessing just to be there and to share the love that God's given me and the things he's done in my life. And I just see God all around that uh, when we do worship there. So anything else I should say about that, Dave? That's, <laughs> that's good. That's right. good. I love it. I love it. Jerome? Okay. I mean, everybody in Redwood City knows Jerome, but you know, let's yeah. let's let's hear a little bit about you, Jerome. Not true at all. Not true at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Jerome, and uh, yeah, I live in Redwood City. And uh, yes, I, like David, I love this city. And so I was kind of thinking about this, and I was thinking about man, when when was the first time I got connected with 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 David and with Street Life? And yeah, I think it was I was the worship pastor at a church called. Uh, Central Peninsula Church, and that is the church that uh, hosts Higher Power. And over the years, I've gotten the privilege to just really to know so many great people of the faith who came through the recovery ministry. There was a guy named Steve Arell. Some of you know exactly who I'm talking about. A wonderful man. I kind of call a giant of the faith, and I miss him still. Uh, and, you know, just guys like Ricky and David, just I, I think that's where we connected. And so um, I don't remember when I started kind of serving or getting connected at street life. I feel like it's been so many years, um, you know, over the years, kind of either bringing groups to, to, uh, to, you know, to help serve meals or, you know, to help in worship or whatever. Um, and I guess for me, cause I know there's a, a ton I can stay uh, say, but I, I think what I really love about street life is I feel like street life fills a gap. Uh, that no other services can really fill. Like there, there is a, a definite need, and we've talked a lot about this. And I've been involved in in city politics a little bit, um, fortunately and maybe unfortunately to some. Uh, and housing is a big issue, right? And and people end up on the street for many reasons. And what I like about street life is they they there's a spiritual aspect to it, which is, which is great, but there's also a holistic approach where there is uh, that addiction issues are looked at, not just saying, Hey, let's, let's help with housing and food. And that's about it. 
I like the fact that Street Life is really focused on kind of the whole person and addressing some of those core issues spiritually and also um, the the addiction issues because if those aren't if those are not addressed, as many of you know, um, then patterns will repeat. Right. And we've seen that statistically in San Mateo County. And so anyway, I think street life is a very important piece of the puzzle. Um, and so I'm a believer in it and I, and I, I'm a supporter. So happy to be on the call and involved. Cool. Ricky, you have any, uh, any questions? R Ricky, Ricky's known both of these folks for quite a while as well. And, and uh, got to know them through the recovery community himself. Yeah, I'm just so grateful for the the gifts that you guys bring to to street life, doing your music, and also to higher power over the years. For so many years, I've never taken it for granted. Just the the level of I think just professionalism that you guys have always brought, I really appreciate. And it's just it's encouraged me in my time of service that you're not just coming and you know winging it, you know, or something. You always come and you serve like you're serving God, and it's always been very encouraging. So I've personally enjoyed partnering with both of you guys and um, and and surrender the band and drum. I haven't got to hear your band yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I just deeply appreciate your guys' friendships and your and your partnerships and and the work that we're doing. Like you said, Jerome, helping people um deal with homelessness and uh mental health and also substance abuse so i just grateful and blessed to be part of a such a strong team of people here in san mateo uh, i'm curious if you guys could just touch on what are some impactful moments that you can share that that you've that you've really uh thought about or just that you can that you can share about your experience at serving the street life over the years anything that's come up <laughs> I've got, I've got a lot. I think for me, um, it's, I'll, I'll give you a late, a, a more lately example. Um, my, my whole family, we come once a month to serve and be a part of the, the meals. And what's been most impactful for me is watching my kids. Um, you know, my, I got two teenagers and I got a 10 year old and watching them interact with people on this, on the street and not only, you know, serve because, oh my gosh, we need to serve these folks, but also kind of like, have have the interaction between the two and and people i've seen people you know just the the gratitude in their eyes and seeing little kids or not little my kids would they're not little well, one of them is kind of little i guess um they're not little anymore uh but kids, <laughs> kids young people um you know serving in, in and and just the the interaction between the two has been um, really impactful for me. And I think it's it's good to get young people out on the front lines to see what's happening. And sometimes it's messy, and sometimes like things get said, and sometimes things kind of get loud. And but I think it's a good thing because it helps um, us see uh, the reality outside of our bubbles, right? And so it's really important for 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 me to see that, and then just for my kids to understand that side of ministry and serving people um, who, you know, Jesus calls us to serve. So that's one of many, you know, but that's, that sticks out lately. It's just been cool to be there with my family. Yeah, that's cool. Right on, Jerome. That's awesome, Jerome. And last night I did see, I think uh, the pastor that shared last night had his two daughters and it was awesome. They sat the whole time through, you know, the worship and listening to their dad. It was, it was really really encouraging because there are not that many kids there. So like you said, it's, that's so great to have them there for that exposure. I think for me, um, um, with the people that come that are in need, um, what I see with them is I see a connection with, I, I don't know how to put this, but when they're there, I feel like there's a peace for them. Like it's a really safe place for them to be and mm. just to kind of chill, you know, not just to get food and clothes and all that's fantastic because that is the physical need but that other spiritual part um, I could just see that sometimes in their eyes I see that there's some soothing that comes you know through the worship and through the Holy Spirit and um, so that's kind of where I you know I was often asked myself you know kind of why am I doing this um, is it just to sing a nice song and have a nice tune I, it's much more than that it's it's spiritual warfare and I know um, the Holy Spirit comes um, and dwells in the place where we put our flag in the ground for him. And I really believe that's a part of it that we don't see, you know, that invisible part, that spiritual part. So um, I feel like the Lord is using me in that way. And um, when I was thinking about this, you know, I, I did think about David and how he played when Saul was going crazy in the Old Testament and how it just totally calmed him down. And I, 
I, I've seen that and not that people were freaking out there. But I just see a soothing thing that is happening. And I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, but I, I just thought that whole safety net of them just coming and, you know, maybe being a place where they can just rest for a little while, you know, being on the streets must be tough, scary. So. You know, you know, it's really interesting, uh, Jeannie, that you shared that too, is um, because I was, I was thinking about sharing this uh, when Ricky was asking the question and then what you just shared was just, was, was perfect because, you know, about 15 years ago when I first came to the ministry, it was um, uh, just some people, you know, that would come down and they would share a little story out of the Bible and, and we had like, uh, you know, there was only a few people at, at Menlo Park. So there's, we just get like some hot pizzas and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, as, as the, the, as I went out and kind of like, you know, made people aware that we were there in Menlo Park mm-hmm. train station, more people started to gather. And as more people started to gather, so did, so did some of the conflict on mm-hmm. the streets, you know, people would show up drunk, they'd show up loaded. This guy doesn't like this guy. And there was they, they, the conflict would start. And, and somebody told me like very early on, they said, have you ever thought about having worship music? You know, it it might, it might calm things down. And so I went out, I bought a, I bought a small little battery operated, you know, one of those little, those little speakers, I connected it to my cell phone. And you know what, it was almost instantly that the music, you know, you know, it calms the savage beast, right? It's, it's, it's kind of like, you have the, the whole area is just filled with gospel music and it kind of just diffuses the enemy's stronghold of anger and stuff. And it, we noticed that the fighting stopped huh. and that, and that just that tension really stopped. And then when we started Redwood city, it was like almost automatic and anybody who's been to Menlo park versus Redwood city, it's kind of like going from our satellite church to our mega church, right? So Redwood city's got this, you know, we have the big speakers, the, the sound system and stuff. But, you know, the, the other thing is, is that I find very interesting is that, and you guys know from coming to the ministry and some of the people that may may never been to the ministry, you know, you have a good 15 to 25 people on any given night that are there for the word. And then all of a sudden, just magically, as soon as the word ends, boom, you've got this massive crowd that shows up for the food. But the thing is, is that the worship music is is the bible and song and so they're just being watched over by the spirit i mean they're they're hearing the bible being sung out like you're talking about king david you know that the songs are just songs you know these beautiful lyrics and and so for me it's i find that it it is a, it is a spiritual battle and i find that worship music is as important and and sometimes even more important sometimes than the actual message because it's just this calming like you nobody wants to argue i mean it's just it's beautiful music going and yeah. you know and i don't know i just it, it feels like you're at a party yeah. you know and they're hearing good music you know i mean and yeah. and i think sometimes you know, i don't know about you guys but sometimes at the ministry i feel like you know i see some of the food that comes across our table you know like salmon with you know all sorts of I mean really good food and music I'm thinking man this is like a this is like a seventy dollar <laughs> ticket meal and our folks just golden hanging ticket. out you know this is like, yeah. golden ticket <laughs> I'm like I'm thinking man this is cool man like you know these guys are really getting a good meal good music you know for some socks and underwear I'm thinking <laughs> I wouldn't want to leave either <laughs> so anyway but right. Yeah, you know, and um, I did want to, you know, I, I also wanted to go into, um, you know, um, I know you guys both have, you know, uh, kind of two sides, you know, you guys do mostly, you know, worship music. I know Jerome's a worship leader and his church. Jeannie, you're, you're a worship leader in your church, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So you guys yeah. have the, you guys have this, this really cool worship side and then i know you guys also have just like some really cool rock and roll songs and you know and and um i i got to ex- i've got to experience both um i you know and i and it was really interesting i didn't even it didn't even dawn on me when you guys were at were at my church doing a worship night at my church and then all of a sudden here we're getting ready to do a fundraiser in october and it's like i'm the two of you are back together right and yeah we're gonna do, that's cool we're, rock and roll. we're connected jerome 
Yeah. 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 No. That's it. You guys, well, you know what? I'm not, I'm not a producer, but maybe we could do like a road show. You know what I mean? We'll get you, you we'll, get the, we'll get the buses. We'll get the road show. I'll bring I'm my ready own. now. <laughs> so, uh, Jerome, tell us, okay. So, so really quick. So tell us a little bit about both. I mean, the, the Sunday, the Sunday morning worship versus, you know, the, 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 the bar, on, on a Friday or Saturday night where you're just rocking the house and then sure. maybe Jeannie, same thing with you. And then, you know, how do you feel like the two kind of connect together in, 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 in some ways? And then, um, yeah. And, and just how you feel like, you know, that's, that's how God has led you guys to, to do what you do. Yeah, sure. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you sort of my, what I'm, um, I'll give you my perspective, um, or from my vantage point. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually one of the pastors at, at, uh, FBC San Carlos, um, you know, because of my experience, I'm, I'm the, the worship guy and, um, you know, my partner, Dave and I, we do we kind of trade off some, on some things. Um, he does most of the preaching, but I, I do some of the preaching too. And, um, but yeah, I've been leading worship for, you know, 25 years. I love it. I still love it. You know, I love being in the congregation. Um, but then outside of that, uh, I also really love to play in my band and we, the band itself, and I've made it, I've tried to make it clear is we're, we're not a, we're not a, by any means a Christian band. We're just a, a sort of, I guess, a rock band. Um, I do, I have originals that I've written that I would not call Christian songs. Um, they're just from sort of a, a perspective of being alive and being a human. Um, and then, yeah, we do play a lot of, um, we play a lot of local places, clubs, bars, things like that. But the cool thing about it with me is I don't ever feel like I'm compromising in my faith. Um, people from my church come and they they know I'm a pastor and they also know that um, I play uh, Tom Petty in bars and they, they like that. And, you know, then we have a conversation after and um, I don't feel like I have to be one way in one place and one way in another. I just doesn't it's never I've never felt that way. So. Um, you know, I mean, sometimes you gotta be careful about like where, you know, what, what you do in what place, obviously like there is context, but anyway, my point is, is that, yeah, we're, we'll be doing that night. We'll be doing, um, you know, some, some rock covers, um, some originals that I've written, written and some of the band has written. And, um, yeah, we do kind of a range of seventies all the way to, to today. Um, Tom Petty and then from Tom Petty all the way to gosh, like we've been doing Weezer lately. So <laughs> kind of like uh, another generation's rock, you know, stuff that, uh, that I sort of grew up on. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, ask any questions you want about sort of, you know, the band and the style of music or is that, does that answer that? Yeah, no, that's great. I, I love it. Yeah. Okay, cool. How about you? Jeannie? I want to say that I love that too, Jerome. And um, I think that if you're not there, you know, representing God, because where where you are, that's where the Lord is. The Holy Spirit's in you, and people people need it everywhere, especially places like that. You know, I so we have a lot of friends that do that that are in our band that do a lot of different secular stuff as well. Cool stuff so for us. So you know, I lead worship once a month at around once a month at my church, Good News Chapel, and um, I love that because our the pastors are so hands off. Um, on, you know, like they don't really tell me every now and then they'll say, can you do this or that? But generally they know I'm kind of like a free spirit. So they're like, just have your way, you know, do what you want, pick your set. And I like to, that's just really works for me. And so that's, you know, just always, um, usually with the worship team that's there at good news. Um, I love that. And, you know, that's the heart of who I am. Um, but the other thing is, is so when we formed Surrender, our band Surrender, uh, that was like in 2016, we just had like a nice combination of some musicians that came to Good News Chapel that were really good musicians. And we're like, you know, we really should form a band and let's do the recovery venue. Um, a long time ago in Pacifica, um, myself and a couple of other people were at a church and we started something called Lighthouse Live. And it was a coffee house. It was kind of similar to what Higher Power is, but and we just like quarterly had bands come. And that's how I met like One Voice Band and, you know, Steve Wallace's band, um, Isaiah, and just a ton of different bands. It was great. And I always thought that would be so cool to do, you know, to share our passion and love that way. Um, so we put it together and I do, we do some originals and then we do a couple of covers. We do, you know, Christian covers mostly. Um, but we try to keep it upbeat as possible. I like slow stuff 
mostly, you know, like if I'm going to do worship, I like slower, kind of more worshipfully songs, but you'll put people to sleep at these recovery <laughs> places if you do that. Yeah. That's not, I mean, one or two is fine, but when you start like, you know, camp in there, you're going to have a problem. So uh, Steve <laughs> told me, he goes, hey, let's just do like one slow song. Okay, just one. And then the rest, let's just like really step it up. So that's what we've been kind of doing. And, you know, it's great. Uh, we have a really great group of people and, you know, we just try to, we're just people just trying to work it out and uh, we get a good response and people love it. But I think mostly it's like, I think it's good for us to have a positive message to share through music and, you know, that we use the Lord in there. I think it's, it's really different for them. Uh, we played at the Fog Fest in Pacifica one year. This is a funny story. And so, you know, people are partying at all those festivals, you know, it's fine. They're walking around with, you know, drinks and stuff. And this guy comes up and he has a drink in his hand and we were doing a pretty rocking song and he was drinking and all of a sudden his cup just kind of went like, uh, oh, what is this? You know what I'm saying? When he started to hear the lyrics, everything. <laughs> uh, okay. See you guys later. But you know, some people loved it, you know? So I just, I just thought that was kind of a crack up, but you know, it's, um, yeah. So I'm, I think that music draws people and it draws them in and it gives us a chance to be able to witness, you know, and, and kind of tell what we do and who we are. They're pretty curious about that. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, and, and I, I, I think Ricky probably this, would say the same thing for me when I first got clean and sober and I got out of, I got out of Salvation Army and, um, I ran into a, a few people, uh, a friend of ours, we, we all know Teresa Sheets and yes. um, some other people who were connected to CPC. They were connected to higher power, and I, but I didn't know anything about a higher power. And I just remember thinking, like I had just accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I just got clean and sober. And and um, I, it was really interesting, but I was out on my own. I was living in a sober living home. And I really didn't know what to do with myself because all I really knew what to do was how to get high. And, and to me, the drugs and alcohol were easier to quit than the, the lifestyle, right? I really was addicted to the drama and to the streets and stuff. And all of a sudden, uh, my sponsor at the time said, you know what? You need to go to this Friday night AA meeting. It's about Christ and they have music and they have food. You need to go there and check it out. And I and when I walked in there, Isaiah was playing. And that was my very first introduction to like, you can have fun clean and sober. Like it was just everybody was up and jumping and raising their hands and shouting out the songs. Every I was like, everybody there knew all the lyrics to every Isaiah song, right? And so <laughs> that was my very first introduction to like you can have fun in recovery. And then I met you and I met Jerome and and I was like, wow, I go, this to me, this is cool, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I now know that being sober doesn't have to, my life isn't over. Like I, I there's a whole nother side to, to it. And so I, that's what I hope happens at Street Life. I, that's one of the things I'm really hoping that people see because Jerome and, and Jeannie and, and our friend Mike, who, you know, we call Mountain Mike and a few other people, you know, when you guys are there, there's a difference between like people who perform and people who are worshiping. And, mm -hmm. and I really feel like people who come to the ministry and they do worship, they see the fact that you guys are really, you're praising the Lord as you're singing, but you're having a good time. You've got a smile on your face. You're enjoying it. You're interacting, you know, like um, you guys, you guys, both of you guys, you guys, you know, like in between your songs, you'll you'll share a little bit with the folks. You'll kind of tell a story around the song. And, mm -hmm. and my hope is that people realize like, wow, you know what? There's something to all this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I want to, I, I want to, I want to, I want that. I don't want what I've got currently. I want what they have, you know, that, that freedom right you know we we know what that freedom is it's the freedom with the holy spirit and um i will say that there's been more people that have come to me through the ministry that have actually been happy after coming and experiencing the ministry and i will say some of the servers we've got some you know we've got some unsaved <laughs> unsaved servers that have come up to me and they go wow this was like really cool and i'm like yeah i know it's fun huh <laughs> it's it's right it's a little addictive you know <laughs> so um Go ahead. Oh, sorry. You know, guys, I, my, my head is just kind of spinning a little bit because this is going to be an interesting thing for me because normally um, 
the the two with is with my band the the whatevers by the way we're called the whatevers I'll, I'll share the story if you want to hear that later um but you know we it's almost like sometimes th- those those worlds will never come together in other words like i've played great recovery you know places meetings even that last uh thing that we did with yeah. you guys uh genie that was really cool yeah and when i talk about the difference in energy i think i literally played a show at a bar the next night or it was the night before or something like that. I remember thinking to myself, man, the energy is so different. Like there's yeah. such beautiful, positive energy in one place. And then the bar we played was, you know, there was some, there was some negativity actually. Um, and there was a guy giving me a hard time and it was just like, wow, what a, you know, what a difference. Um, and so it will be kind of interesting to sort of, to, cause I would also, I want to invite people who like you're describing, uh, David, people who maybe not might might not be believers and people that might go to one of my shows in a bar, but also see the, Hey, mm-hmm. I'm actually a Christian yeah. and I serve at street life. And I'd love to see those two come together in a cool way. And then also having surrender there, um, you know, you guys, you guys, first of all, a great band. I really like, really like uh, you guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jerome. And you guys too. Well, we you, you fun, we have fun my church band, but so, but so you yeah, wait until, <laughs> wait until you see us. Um, oh, you might not like, I don't know, but um, oh, I'm yeah, going to love them. Don't worry. You guys do a great job. And, um, but what I like about, you know, what you guys bring is you bring, you bring your, your faith, you know, into, into the music and, um, but in a really cool artistic way. So I'm hoping, I guess my point is I'm hoping that this will be a great blending of two different things and, it brings, I think, hopefully it brings street life, uh, you know, um, some support and amps up the ministry. Yeah. I think, I, I think good. we can make it work. Yeah. Cause I, yes. you know, yeah, yeah. I just rant right now. Just oh, you, you <laughs> the ministry. Oh, it, but my background blocks it out. I can't show it anyway. David, you're vanishing. You look invisible. <laughs> Do it again. No, no. My, I was trying to hold up the Amplify Hope. and, it, hey. and it oh, oh, it. Jeremy said he'll put it in the, in the chat for everybody to have the link. Okay. Okay. Awesome. The event. Well, yeah. listen, guys, hey, we're we, talking we, about an event, October 21st, seven yeah, o'clock. So listen, Oslo. guys, we said that we were working to keep people more than a half hour. So yeah, we got a late it. start, but I know we can go all night long. I know. Oh, we want to talk all night. Have, I have whatever. a lot of stories. <laughs> I do want to hear how the name of the whatevers uh, came yeah, about. Yeah, so I want to know how how the whatever came out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I've been playing, you know, I've been, I've had a lot of different band members in that sort of crew. Um, and it used to be called the Jeromatigan band. I, I played a lot of originals and, you know, I started at one point, I, what I realized is in the Bay area to get into places to play, you got to play covers. I mean, yes. I was playing in places and people just weren't, I felt like they weren't listening and, and, or they wouldn't even let me play because it was like, we just need you to play covers. And so I thought, why don't we, why don't we, you know, have a deep bench of covers or, or build a beach, a deep bench of covers so that we can get into places and then be able to, you know, throw in our originals. And so, uh, one thing is one thing we would say a lot would be like, well, what should we do? And, you know, we would have this joke, like, well, why don't we just, you know, whatever, I don't care. What do you want to do? It would be that kind of thing. And (laughs) we would say that a lot. And then <laughs> and the next thing was that we realized that we, we we play so many different types of covers that it's sort of like whatever, whatever keeps the party going is what is like our kind of what our band does. So we we call ourselves the whatever. So Jerome, that. Jay, that's whatever, that's whatever great. Just the whatever's, yeah. So that's whatever awesome. whatever's needed in whatever situation, we try to provide that. <laughs> so that's very awesome. original. Yeah, we'll see. Well, guys, you know, I, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much. And I wanted to thank the people that um, watch this. I, I and hope the folks that do watch after we're over and uh, Jeremy edits all of the, the delay in the beginning and puts it out on our channel to see it. I really hope that they enjoy uh, this very first live podcast. Um, I We are going to have on October 21st with uh, Jeannie Smith and Jerome uh, and what the whatevers and with surrender and and like I just said Jerome and the whatevers and um, this could be a fun night at the odd fellows on uh, it's what is it eight it's the address eight something oh my gosh I don't know I just know how to get there oh um, man you'll find it on like, Main Street, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, eight thirty nine Main Street, Red City, music. Yeah. rock and music, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be rock and music. It's going to be loud. It's going to be good. We're going to be doing some, we got some dancing. Uh, Ghostwood Brewery is, is hosting the beer. We're going to have some food. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, 
you know, we did a gala event uh, downtown at, at the Little Fox. Um, it was uh, gala music. It's, it was opera and stuff. Really not my um, my cup of tea of music, but I was blown away by the people that actually showed up. We had we had about 100 people that actually filled into the Little Fox. It was wonderful. And and I huh? thought, you know what? When we had that, it was a really good event. And I, I will say opera music not being my my music that I go to, but you know, when you're there and you hear it live, it's it's really something, you know. So I know then then kind of going into this now, I know the old the rock and roll music is definitely something I like, but I definitely <laughs> know that um live is gonna be really cool to listen to. We're gonna have a lot of fun. And so I really hope that a lot of people will come out and, and help out and, and it will go for a good cause that all the money that we raise goes into the ministry. Um, you know, we're, we're growing as a ministry. When I first came here uh, 15 years ago, you know, we had Thursday nights in Menlo Park and we served about, you know, maybe anywhere between 17 to 25 people um, on Thursday nights. And now, we're serving, you know, as it showed on the video, 45,000 to 50,000 uh, meals a year, you know, and um, the, the sad thing is, and which just breaks my heart, but um, over the, the 15 years I've been a part of this ministry, um, you know, just seeing the drug addiction that has just exploded on, onto the scene, um, you know, it's just been heartbreaking to see because it's creating so much as you guys know, and, and Jerome, you know, being part of the city of Redwood City, you saw it a lot as well. But, you know, um, people use the drugs and alcohol to self-medicate from a mental health issue. But then what ends up happening is the drugs and alcohol create more mental health issue. And then it just turns into this massive uh, vicious mm -hmm. cycle. And um, I just feel like we're, we're, we got a, a, a fire hose wide open coming at us and, um, yeah. But I really, I will say that over the years, the one thing I, I love about this ministry is, you know, because of Street Life Ministries being a Christian organization, we're able to kind of pivot and work in a way that some of the city agencies can't. But the cool thing is, is that we've been able to partner with a lot of the city agencies. They lean on us, we lean on them. And it's just been between the city of Redwood City and the San Mateo County and the sheriff's office and the police station and all the other life moves and all the other agencies. Um, it really has been an amazing partnership because there's aspects of every agency that we're connected with that offers something that the other one doesn't offer. And um, so we're just, you know, we're, like I said, we're having a fundraiser on October 21st to, to raise some money so we can keep, keep going and doing what we're doing and just hope people come out and have a good time. So. Can I just say one really quick thing? Yeah, 100 percent. Absolutely. OK, very quickly. Ricky, I just want to thank you so much. And I'm sure I'm saying this also for Jerome, that you really supported the bands at Higher Power. And so we're kind of um, a product of that. You know, you supported us. You always booked us. And if it weren't for that, you know, I mean, you were just always behind the scenes. So you really have a good guy in Ricky as far as bands goes. He knows where to find him. He knows yeah, where to yes, get us you know, for the future for you guys, you know. Hey, I, I, you know, Jeannie, that you know, now that you said that, uh, that is why one of the reasons why I, um, <laughs> do I, can I say the word in, in a Christian ministry? Can I say steal? I, I stole, you I stole him. Ricky. I stole, Ricky. Him out. I stole Ricky from CPC. <laughs> <laughs> I coerced him. I twisted his arm. I don't know what, yeah. what's, what's the proper word to say, but yeah, he's, he's I, done. um, Yes, Ricky has been a great uh, add-on to the ministry and has Absolutely. really helped out a lot. He's got a huge gift in caring and like a care yeah. ministry, and it's been wonderful. He does. I will say if there's anybody that watches this video now or in the future that are into doing worship, we definitely need more worship. So um, if you know anybody who just wants to come, I mean, even if they don't, even if you don't sing, but you're really good at playing guitar, you just want to come and plug in and, and play guitar for our folks, please let me know. Cause we, we have a lot of open slots. We'd love for people just to come and hang out. You know, even if you're a church worship band and say one night of the week, uh, a month is like your, your band's worship practice night, bring your practice material down, practice. You know, mm -hmm. do your worship practice at Street Life Ministries. Our folks won't know the difference. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come down, practice your church set at Street Life Ministries. You know, I don't know. 
but we definitely could use we definitely could use some people that want to come and do worship and we'll uh, work on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the word out. You know, yeah. I, I, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good commitment. Really is. So thank you guys both, and uh, and Ricky, thank you so much for uh, being here, and really do appreciate it. And we'll look forward to our next live, a live podcast. So and then we'll, next time hopefully we won't have any plugs up. For you. Thank you guys. Yeah, awesome. Fun. Thanks, guys. Look forward well, to it. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'm, I'll just close this in prayer and then uh, we'll say goodnight, okay? So, Heavenly Father, just want to say thank you so much for uh, surrender and Jerome and the whatevers. Lord, bless Jerome, bless, bless uh, Jeannie, God, for their gift that you've given them. And Lord, continue to watch over them and guide them. Lord, bless Ricky uh, for his uh, uh, ability to just be um a gift giver somebody who just just totally just helps uh build this ministry spiritually for us and uh for those behind the scenes that have helped uh this live feed uh just bless them lord and thank you so much for those who will watch this video and see it lord i pray that they hear the goodness of christ in this message lord and that i, I pray that people will come to the lord and uh yeah just lord just bless us and watch over us and guide us i pray these things in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. Awesome. Cool, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, David. Thanks, Ricky. We'll see you, Jerome. Okay. We'll see you okay. then. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.